So I had just really, really bad luck to travel on this trip. And on the way back, on the way there, my 6 p.m. flight was delayed four hours. And it left at 10. <gasps> I got there at 3. Four hours. There would be nothing left of me. Got there at 3 a.m. Same thing on the way back. My 6.30 four flight. Four hours? Delayed four hours. I got back at 2 a.m. No. Um, it was awful. And so I was in this delirium on the way back where I thought in my head, I was like, oh, I can write a lot of funny things about this experience. I'm going to write a stand-up routine. <laughs> You wrote a like a travel stand up but routine. Like, looking back at it, it's so bad. Let's hear but it. Like at one o'clock in the morning, I was like, "Oh, this, this is funny. This is funny. Let's <laughs> hear it. I'll get to it. Bring I'll get it to up. It a I'll talk about it in a minute. But I was like, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be famous. Like I'm gonna go do an open mic night in Houston somewhere, and I'm gonna start my stand up career, and this is gonna be the beginning of it. And then I read it, and I was like, what was I thinking? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and what I am, I thought I was really funny, but in hindsight, I so I pulled it up just to read some of the thoughts, but it's not, it's not good, but it was an ordeal. Maybe we could work it a little bit. Maybe yeah. you could read it <laughs> and the audience, all of us together yeah. would see if we could work yeah. it. Yeah. Well, we can do that because today, today we have a great, we had, we really planned this out. We did. We, this is going to be a very organized conversation. Super organized. Uh, meaningful. And, yes. Uh, planned for your enjoyment everyone's enjoyment so, so do you want to get started let's go ahead and get started hello and welcome to the almost amazing podcast from the city rise network hosted by jennifer dennis and produced by me justin kello we're a podcast that was supposed to be focused on parenting but we've kind of lost the plot along the way honestly we don't know what this podcast is about but we talk to incredible people who love jesus and our hope is to provide encouragement and fun whenever possible if our lack of clear direction bothers you, we apologize, but no one is making you listen to this podcast, unless you're married to Jennifer. Andy, thanks for listening. Hey everybody, and welcome to the Almost Amazing Podcast. We're excited that you're here today. Thank you for joining us. Justin is just back from the North. From New York City. New York City. You know, it's funny, I was talking to this, uh, this um, teenager and I said, he was thinking about moving to New York, and I said, you don't want to live up there with all the Yankees. Mm. And he goes, oh, it wasn't New York City. It was another city. Oh, okay. And I go, Which oh, are also Yankees. you're thinking <laughs> the, baseball the baseball team. I'm thinking the whole mindset of. When did you head out, and how was your trip? I headed out Thursday night, and then I got back Sunday night. And it was without children, which was great. Uh, Kristen kept the kids at home. It was I, my my brother has lived there for many years, but it's been I've had kids the entire time he's been there. And just like getting kids in New York is a nightmare. Like, it's just something I don't want to ever experience. Yep. So I was like, well, I'm never going to see you because I can't take these kids. And then I, finally, Kristen and I were like, well, maybe I can go by myself because the kids are old enough now. So I'm by myself and it was good. And it was nice that it was a non-touristy weekend. Every time I've been in New York City, it's been like a lot of like, let's see this, let's go there, let's do this, let's do that. Right. And this, I've already done all that. So this was very chill and hanging out. I so love good. those times because you now you're getting to go to someone's favorite coffee shop. Now you're yes. getting to go to yeah. get in a, a little bit more of their regular routine. Yeah, and we, I, yeah. It's a cool vibe. We ate an absurd amount of good food. Some of them I suggested, some of them he suggested. So it was kind of a collaboration effort for that weekend. But I did see a picture. Uh, that's all I posted was pictures of food. I did see a picture where you're sitting right in front of J-Lo. Yes. What? So that happened the last day we were there. We went to a brunch to meet some of my some of his friends and we, we had been there for like an hour, maybe an hour and a half just visiting or wrapping up and then I it's like a shotgun restaurant where it's like it just goes straight back. It's not very wide but it's like a hallway almost. And so we're on one side of the hallway and there's some tables in the middle and then another another row. And I see Matt Damon. I'm like, Matt Damon just walked in. Like he has glasses on, but he walked in with purpose going right towards his seat. I was like, that's Matt Damon. And then his friend, um, my brother's friend that was there with us, he kind of looked around. I was like, well, that's J-Lo. Like they were together. I had just clocked Matt because I think J-Lo came by first. Um, and they sat down. And so they were two booths behind us. And I could tell they brought somebody to sit in the booth behind us to block view because like, that booth was immediately seated as well. So I'm like, oh, these people are probably with them. But before they sat down, I had pulled out my camera and and was taking a selfie with her over my shoulder. And then a split second of that photo, a guy sat down and blocked my view. So I was lucky, fortunate to get that photo of J-Lo. So was Ben with them? So 
Matt Damon had a woman with him. I'm assuming that's his wife. I would assume Ben was coming later because we had left. We were on our way out and we had to walk on walk by them on our way out. So I would assume Ben was on his way later. But it was very much a surreal moment, primarily because the last time I was at brunch in New York City 10 years ago, we sat by Taylor Swift. And so I'm like, wow, now if I ever go to brunch again, I'm like, I have th- this is what happens. Like, Who it's just will no- we see? It's just normal for me to see someone famous. You know, it's it has to be surreal. She looked beautiful, by the way. Yeah, she looked really good. She was winning hair that day. Her but hair it's was like, perfect. yes, she was a winning hair. And I just thought that was such a wild catch. But it, wild, and you got a picture. Wild, yes. And I didn't get a picture of Taylor Swift. So that's my biggest regret. So I was like, I am taking a picture. I don't care if I get tackled for this and nobody cared. I think Jayla is actually on a PR tour to look normal. I think she's had some things happen that makes her look a little bit out of touch. She's had some bumps on the road, <laughs> the so old PR I, I road. I think this was a, she's normal. She has brunch with friends and she's not going to get mad at you for taking she's a picture just like you. or looking at you in the eyes, you know, like, <laughs> because that's the rumors <laughs> that you can't even like, look at her in the eyes. You're not allowed to make uh, eye contact so, with her. So I think that's what it was because it was very, very it just felt very planned well i will just to let the audience know i know you guys are like Wait, kind of have you seen a celebrity have i seen yes. a celebrity What's like in the biggest person? celebrity you've seen in person wow I, that's such a great question because i've been kind of close to celebrities in a bigger setting to where i couldn't actually meet them like, like you paid to see taylor swift in nrg right we were further <laughs> apart <laughs> <laughs> there was some significant distance between us. Uh, like I was at a fan com yeah. and uh, John Cusack was there for an 80s, 70s girl. John yeah. Cusack was a big mm-hmm. deal. Yeah. I don't know if you I know it is. have heard of Say him. anything. You yes, know. say yeah. anything. Mm-hmm. Your eyes. Anyway. Yeah. And then um, I, I'm trying to think of who else kind of flipped me out. But here's the deal. I kind of I, I really cannot. I don't have any chill. Oh, yeah. Like I'm I see him across the way and I'm like, Chuck Cusack, Chuck Cusack. <laughs> like, and he's like, we're not. Mm-mm. No, you got to stop doing that. And I'm outside of the paid area. Yeah. And he's at a distance. But I'm like, John Cusack, John Cusack. <laughs> I know you just make eye contact with me. So I don't have a chill. And I think to oh. myself, if I were to be in a situation where I'm just casually having to be with a star. Yeah. I don't think I can do that well. I, I would believe that. I would say everyone in the <laughs> I room. Believe that everyone in the room started like clocking that she was there and and uh, Matt Damon was there but n- everyone was chill it was kind of like you could see like a wrestling of people like trying to furtively glance towards her but nobody was obnoxious about it I'm assuming in New York City that's the vibe or, across yeah, the board yeah you can't if be uncool see, same you thing probably cool. in LA like if you see somebody you just like have to be chill about it and so everyone was chill about it and that was the finale of my trip really um, that's a great send off but I will say on the way back um well on the way there I had a four hour delay and got there at 3 a.m., oh. which was miserable, but I had no kids. So I was like, this is fine. If this was with kids, you can read a book. If this was the children, it would be the worst day of Terror. my life. Terror. And then um, Southwest is so like, well, we hope to make it up to you on your next flight. Well, on my next flight, they delayed it four hours again. And <laughs> I got back in Texas. They actually at 2 didn't make it up. They did not make it Double up. Down. But it was such a funny experience because when, listen, there is not a community that comes together more organically and more quickly <laughs> than an airplane full of people that are angry at an airline. Oh, for real. There, there is no race. There is no gender. There is no politics. It is. We all hate this together. Right. And we're angry about it because they got us on the plane and we taxied for a full hour waiting in line to get out. Ooh. And then some storms rolled in and the pilot come on and said, Hey, we just discovered our flight radar is broken. We have to go back and get another plane after we've been taxing for an hour. And so you've got this community of people coming off this plane, just livid and like all united against Southwest. <laughs> like just so angry. No pun yeah, exactly. So you've got like lawyers who are going to the front desk and like arguing for the whole, you know, the whole crowd of like what their rights are. And you have like teenagers in the corner making TikToks, like getting the word out about how terrible Southwest is. And you have like different people working together together to like solve this problem like the old military guys are like going to find out the information they're coming back and they're like making announcements like this is what i discovered when i talked to southwest and like it's the one time you want karen's in your community because yeah. she is on the phone they're gonna be making screaming at somebody you know, so it's, it's, it's just funny, funny too community. how people immediately take on different roles yes like there's the leader yes. the the organizer mm-hmm. the we've made the we've yep. made the line over here what do you think my role is i took on um okay so i don't I uh, I think that you don't take over the whole crowd. No. I think you probably have loud 
comments to make sarcastically <laughs> or some you, comedy. You you nailed it. It is the easiest, most captive audience to start making immediate humor and jokes yeah. about it. Like it, for real. Immediately, like, you know, we we got back in line. I was like, well, good thing we practiced this already boarding the first time. You know, you get a little chuckles or whatever. And <laughs> you know, even the like lowest level of joke in that scenario, people think it's funny. It's yes. like it's an easy you know, crowd. you're on the plane and you're like, I called seat chick and I have that seat back I had earlier. You know, it's just like no. <laughs> stupid stuff. People are ready to laugh because they're so ready to get in the air. It's a little bit of a break in the tension. It was a break in the tension. It. it was we all in the same boat. So it really was uh, a community moment. What do you think I am in that situation? Uh, probably similar. Yep. Probably same similar. Role. Like same it's role. such an easy. It's just you can sense you can smell it. You're like these people will laugh at anything. Um. Yeah. Exact same role. Yeah. I, I like to ease the tension. <laughs> I have a little bit of laughter. Yeah. I do hate when, because what happens is if you make a funny comment, then people make eye contact with you and they're bonding mm, with you like, yeah. oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But I hate when I bond with the person who's a little too angry. Yeah. And you're like, oh no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> we did not come here together. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. They've really crossed over. I yep. think they might actually be kicked out of this whole yeah. situation. Yeah. Uh, so I'm so glad you had an incredible trip to New yeah. York. I could talk about it for an hour. I got many well, that's good news yeah. because- no, We're know, not talking about New York for an hour. I guess we'll talk about <laughs> Let me tell our audience this. We did not have a guest today. And so we decided with a lot of thought and a lot of uh, and a lot of reflection that we were going to do a kind of a catch up, see how you're doing episode and just share what God's doing in our lives, share what we're learning as we walk in our faith and kind of encourage you guys like uh, we're in the spring. Everything's kind of like wrapping up for the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, my daughter turns 18. And great. I'm sort of. Struggling. With I'm that? lamenting. Mm -hmm. I'm lamenting today. She's going to be an adult. Yeah. I mean, is she, are you kicking her out tomorrow? Adult. What is You're that? Kicking her out tomorrow to get up to her. She is. Place. She's looking for apartments today. Yeah. Right. Uh, she called, asked if we could co-sign. Obviously not. Yeah. No, she's wrapping up her her senior year, but to 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 realize she turns 18 tomorrow. Yeah. And according to the world, like obviously. Not really, but right. to the world, it's like she's 18. Mm -hmm. She can move out. She can start her own life. But to think in in some ways you're done, like mm -hmm. in this stage, yeah, it's huge. I've been really thinking through what to say to her, like how to still lead her. How do I mean? Does she get grounded still at 18? Do she we lives on your house? Yo, <laughs> I know. Can we take her phone? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it just it's a lot of reflection on. And now I'm starting to understand how adult parents feel. You you feel your power lessening, mm -hmm. but the intense, like you can still see them making decisions you don't agree with or that you're a little concerned about right. and you have less power to impact that. Yeah. So you have to manage those feelings mm -hmm. because your child is not not going to want to hear you talk about them all day right. or how you're concerned or you need to be checking this or that mm -hmm. or do this. So it's just like really a new phase that we're in. Right. Um, Andy, the other a few I may have told you this, but a few. Weeks ago, she's like, Mom, can I go spend the night with a friend? And I look at Andy and I go, are we doing this? He looks at me and he goes, are we doing spend the night? Do you think this is okay? And I go, yeah, like she's about to turn 18. That's the first time she'd ever asked? No, 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 no. She's done sleepovers. Uh, we stopped him for a while because, uh, you know, okay. everybody was kind of. But he goes, are we letting her do sleepovers? And I go, she goes off, in the, she goes off to college yeah. in like just a few weeks. So, right. yeah, we're going to do that. Right. But anyway, I've been lamenting. I'm just reflecting. And uh and I think that this stage and some of the listeners are probably hearing it's like now it's empty nest. I went straight from mm. my first child going through to now I'm in empty nest. We should have like six more kids. So yeah. this would be Allison Finch told me she's like dividing up, dividing yeah. up the sadness over her. Oh, right. You right, know, right. kids. Mm -hmm. So she can only give so much emotion. She has a slow time. progression towards a full. No, me. Nest. I get to drop it all in one big finale. Yeah. You're not alone. There's many people out there with, with only children that have faced that. Um, and they have survived and thrived and <laughs> made it through. Well, made it through. So, so this is why I'm sharing this. So last night we had one of our sweetest volunteers actually we've had him on the show. Um, Mr. Alberto, Alberto, mm -hmm. and he's just had a, his second baby. I love this guy. And he was leading Wednesday night blast third, fourth and fifth graders. And we we're talking about how do you know that you're not walking with the God? How do you know that you're not walking with God like you should, or you're not spending time in his word or you're not listening to God? Mm -hmm. What starts to manifest itself in your life? I thought you'd like to answer this question too in a minute, but Mr. Alberto gets up and he goes, I know this is weird. But I start shopping oh. 
And he said, I think I'm hungry for something. And I begin to shop. Justin. Is that you? Is that you? I have been shopping obsessively. Oh. Let me tell you, I have been wishing I knew what Olivia needed to wear for every day of her first year in college. Mm. And I would go thrift or purchase everything and yeah. put it in a box. So I, I think there's the part of me that's dealing with a lot of insecurity right. and wanting to feel like everything's prepared. Yeah. I have been shopping like a maniac. Wow. And that moment, I was like, how wild? Because I really think that was a God moment of me. Him, like, I know that was Mr. Alberto, but it was a yeah. moment for me to realize, hey, wait, this intense shopping to mm -hmm. meet, check every box that I think may come is me feeling scared. I think that's whether it's to deal with your faith or just when you are tired or overwhelmed, like everyone I think has a coping mechanism yes. that, that they go to. And it is, it is a bit of self awareness to, to know what that is. Um, and sometimes that takes somebody articulating that out loud to hear it and be like, Oh, that's me. You know, that's, that's me. That's, there's people listening right now. They're like, Oh, I do that too. I shop as well. Or so, you know exactly. I mean? And you feel like because you're thrifting, it won't be as noticeable, right. but it is. Isaiah 41, many of you are familiar with this, but I love Isaiah 41, 9. I took you from the ends of the earth, from its furthest corners. I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you, and I'll hold you with my righteous hand. And it's such a good reminder in Scripture that whatever, I mean, Olivia is going to, set off on this great adventure, but God still has me. He's going to give me strength to walk through this. Right. And I can stop shopping like a complete lunatic and just trust him with right. every day. And so right now that's what I'm walking through is just trusting God with the, with th this future, with what we're walking through. It's funny that shopping it. I don't, I mean, I guess everybody <laughs> has ever, something. I will say that Andy has, does not love it. He does, doesn't love that it's shopping. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's cheaper things to, to cope, but I, I think everybody would say their phone or whatever is also part of that. Like, you know, it's easier to engage in a phone than like go to God with your problems or whatever. It's true. I would say yeah. that I struggle with that as well. Yeah, it's, it is hard, but um, it's it, like I said, half the battle is, is realizing what it is, which you don't, you can't schedule a light bulb moment like that, which is it, at, at a certain point, God's got to speak up, you know, like right. I'm not saying that like, it's all on him to help you feel, but like he, he's got to spark that in you. He's got to, he's got to, let you know what that is. Um, otherwise you're going to keep blindly doing it. And true. And I think that it eases in, it eases in when we have a little bit of anxiety or we're not trusting God, we're not hearing his voice. We're not. And that's the, that's the thing we see our relationship with God sometimes as a discipline. Oh, I gotta do this. I gotta sure. do this. I gotta do this. But truthfully, the time with him is so refreshing. It's replenishing. It strengthens us. It, it helps us to rest, to be calm, to know that we're in his hands. Right. And so it's funny to me that we see it, you know, when we're not spending time with, Oh yeah, yeah I got to get to that. I got to mm -hmm. do that. But right now I just need to ease my brain. So I'm going to yeah. get on my phone. I'm going to go back to Goodwill. I feel you. And we don't recognize the pattern right? until he speaks into it. Or we listen to a podcast mm -hmm. where Jennifer and Justin say, are you stuck in a pattern? Dude, I love podcasts. Uh, my friend, John Litzler, he's been on the show, actually. He has a podcast called What is Good with the, he works at the Texas Baptist Convention with like their legal or something. I don't know what it is. But these four people get together and talk about a different subject each week. And they recently talked about, they talk about political stuff. Like they're talking about Roe versus Wade on this year, this week's episode. Ooh, that's but a big one. But previously they just talked about like family worship. And, and so I think that God is... What I love, we we're talking before the show, you were looking at all these stats about how many podcasts exist and how many are, have more than 10 episodes. And it's just, it's a saturated market, of course. But what I love about podcasts is that the, the Christian community is, is actively finding ways to fill that space with things that are encouraging. And this, you know, his podcast is an example of that because they've talked about real life issues. And, and so I find myself thinking like, oh, I should think about that differently. Or that's, that is how God would handle this or, you know, the way God can use hopefully our podcast, but all Christian podcasts to get people to take a new step in their faith is I think a new um, way that God is speaking that he didn't do previously because it didn't exist. Like, I mean, there's like talk radio a little bit and there was like Christian radio with DJs that will like read a scripture between or whatever, but long extended conversations about faith is not something you could have unless you were in that conversation. And so I love that there's a space now um, so if you're asking me what I'm listening, what I mean, what I'm learning from God, it's it's coming through 
unexpected places like that because in this season of life, like having a quiet moment with God before school starts is impossible because my kids wake up screaming, just wake up screaming. Um, and then by the end of the day, when they're asleep, I am exhausted. I am not going to be able to have that moment. And so being able to to find creative ways to to hear from God, to connect with scripture, to connect with other believers, whatever, I am appreciating that technology has made that a, like way easier than it ever has for those of us who, you know, like you, you don't even get to go to church on Sunday sometimes. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like yeah. you're you're serving the church. I get to go, but yes, I don't get to be part of the right. every service every right. week. Right. So, um, and we thank you for that. And it's an important job and and no one would say that you shouldn't do that. But like in in our day and age, pastors and, and full-time employees of churches aren't the only ones who got have to get creative with their faith. You know, the moms who um, are dealing with kids all day or the dads who, whatever, like, they we were all having to get creative because life is so insane. And so I love that technology is is in a space where if you use it correctly, you can help with that. You know, one of our pastors, we were we were all meeting, we're talking about uh Roger asked us, where are you guys growing spiritually? What are you doing in your daily life? Because Roger says you can't pour out what you don't have. Sure. So if you're not growing your spiritual life, you're not gonna be able to encourage others. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was interesting. One of the pastors said, you know, I was walking in a tough space in my in my with my family or my life and i just felt myself stop listening to christian music as much Mm. i felt myself just sort of shut down and put a cap over my heart for a while yeah and i thought how often we just kind of quiet quit in our faith and it's not like we stop going to church or we stop believing but it's almost like we take a quiet step back and Mm -hmm. we're just and we're just putting our hand up to just give me a minute i don't I don't want to engage with this yet. And I, why do you think we, why do you think that happens? Like, especially if we're going through difficult times or maybe there's a dry spell or we go through a wilderness or desert. Um, I think there, I think in Christian culture, there is an overwhelming promise of feeling Christ's affection. And when you go through seasons where you can't feel it, it's immensely discouraging because we, preach it in such a way that we're like, oh, Christ's affection for you is constant and always able to be felt. And that's not true. Like, it's just not true. You're not always going to feel his love in tangible ways. And so when you stop that, or maybe you have incorporated a sin in your life that's inhibiting that, like you are going to be discouraged. And it's like, well, I don't want to pursue him because I don't feel like he wants me. Do you feel too that when people are going through some of these difficult, when we're going through a difficult stage, we feel this little touch of shame, like maybe we've something we've done has that God's allowing this to happen because we've messed up somehow or deserve sure. it or probably depends on the person. You know, I think that I, I wish we were more open and honest about like the roller coaster of faith and not the like that faith is this mountain plateau where you're like there. I think we talk about it in passing, but really being honest with like, hey, there will be seasons where not even at your own fault. Like life is just so overwhelming. Your faith is going to feel feeble, you know, like it, it, and no, and no one's fault, you know, cause we live in an imperfect world. We, we don't have a perfect connection with God. We're never going to have a perfect connection with God on this side of eternity. So like your connection with him will constantly be up and down. And it's true. Like, and, but God will do an incredible work in a master seat of faith. So I feel like he's looking just for a, I mean, a yeah. glimmer of faith. Sure. But that doesn't change that work is hard or your kids are making bad choices or, you know, all these like symptoms of a broken world that right. can inhibit your ability to feel that. I think to, you're right. To muster up that faith. The the walking in the gro- the walking in the broken world thing mm-hmm. is hard. It's tough. It feels right. very powerless. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting that we attach so much of our everyday life to our relationship with God, but we're still walking in this expanding space universe thing that's broken and awful. I don't know. I, I feel like we we tend to quiet quit a little bit when things get overwhelming. Yeah. And I'm saying like we have to lean in. I think those are the times when we have to lean into our faith or or, or just say the prayer. God, I, I don't know how to even pray today. I don't mm-hmm. even have this desire to spend time in prayer today. Sure. Will you give that to me or give me right. a word from you, a hint from you, uh, something, yeah. you know? But I I thought that was really cool that that other, that uh, Alberto, and if you see Alberto out on the street, don't mention the whole shopping thing. 
I just that. realized I probably shouldn't use his name. I, I will say he this, care. something that's helpful. I mean, you weren't at our staff worship the other day because you had some sort of training or something, but Kathleen Yarborough presented and shared. She taught, you know, uh, our staff about um, Christian meditation versus like, you know, secular meditation and like secular meditation is trying to clear your mind of everything. Whereas Christian meditation is trying to fill your mind with God. Um, and so she talked about how this idea of, you know, all spiritual disciplines work together, but there are, from what I understand, that's the way I took it to heart was there's different seasons where different spiritual disciplines mean more to you than others. You know what I'm saying? Mm, like, yes, you're not always going to be like super prayer, but scripture is great. You're not always going to be like fasting, but the, like, we are imperfect humans. We're never going to have like a full barrel of all this stuff happening at the same time. And so she opened up my eyes to another option. And you know, you think, okay, there's reading the Bible and there's praying. And those are pretty much your options. And she's like, no, there's like, obviously we hear about these other options, but she went into depth on one of them about meditation. And like, it's, it's looking at God, looking at you essentially. It's like looking at God and how he looks at you and, and shows his love to you. And so she had to sit for three minutes and I was like, I don't know what to do for three minutes if I'm not praying to God. So I was like, I don't really know what that is. And so I just started thinking, okay, if this is me looking at God and how he loves me, I'm just going to start listing the ways that I know he loves me. And, and just that, it wasn't even a prayer. It was like reflecting on God's nature um, and just like listing out, like, I know he loves me because of these, you know, these things. And even that was a meaningful moment that if you aren't open to other spiritual disciplines other than scripture reading and prayer, then you're not going to experience the fullness of God that you can have. Like you need to be Constantly exploring other options, I think. That's a really good, that's a good insight. You should have been there. I'll have Kathleen come to your office. and. I know. I hated to miss that, but I did have to go to a training. Do you feel trained? I feel very trained. Okay. But I will say, not to throw any trainings under the bus, but we literally show up in the room and they read the manual to us for two hours. Was it CPR training? It was something like that. (laughs) CPR, they usually get a dummy in there. You can bring that thing back to life over and over again. I would have preferred that. At least I could, you know, get to act out a seizure. But this, uh, yeah, this was pretty dry in in the training world. And I walked up to the lady and I go, you know, you guys... You guys should consider a magician or something. <laughs> She's like, we don't have money for, you know, she just made some kind of quip. And I'm like, never mind kidding about the magician. Yeah. Anyway, so we're I, sorry we're having to have the show without a guest this week. Uh, but I do have a get to know you question. OK. For the end of the show. Sure. Is this kind of a short show? Uh, it's like seven minute show. <laughs> <laughs> so we were like, thank goodness. Yeah, seven that's minutes. Over. I've been waiting for one of those. If someone made it this far, they're a real fan, though. That's what I feel like yes. at the end of every episode. I'm not, I, I'm not apologizing for the length. I'm like, if you are hearing this, then like, thanks you're, for sticking around. You're engaged. Thanks for, for staying. Sure. Before you get to that final question, I'd love for you to give a plug for um, summer stuff that's coming up. I think yes. I want to make sure that, you know, the reason we don't have a guest, the reason we missed an episode last week is because you are running to get ready for summer. We've got all the lot. things we do. It is like we are warming up a lot of plates mm-hmm. for the, for the summer. We yep. have the first big one that's coming is VBS. Sure. That's huge. And mm-hmm. so if you're interested in volunteering for VBS, we'd love to have you. If you're interested in teaching, please let us know. And if you want to have your kids come, please register. We register people all the entire time, sure. even during VBS. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we have Super Summer Stuff coming. That's a yep. day camp from 9 to 4. Yep. Uh, and that is a fun time. I yep. think Pine Cove and Camp, are those full. two things may be kind of full. Yeah. But those are the two options are amazing. We would love to have you check us out on City Rise, hold on, don't tell me, cityrise.org slash kids slash summer. No, Wait, just no, slash no, don't summer. tell me. Just oh, slash I summer. I was going to get it right. Slash Cityrise.org summer. slash summer. And that takes you to student activities as well. So um, if yes. you've got teenagers and you want to see what's going on. the But yes, a lot of these things do have registrations and they're filling up. So, you know, if you want to make be a part of some of our summer stuff, um, for sure, sign up as soon as possible. But no, it's going to be a great summer. And... It is my daughter's going to kids camp for the first time. Yay. We're going to love having Maggie. My It'll be a blast. Up. I hope. I hope. She's never. Why she's don't never, you come? Because uh, I don't want to. And uh, she's never been away overnight. So I'm, I'm Justin, you should come. See, no, I don't want to. Okay. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you're like, I don't just, want to. And here's what I'm going to say. I don't think. Maggie wants me there either. Uh, she'd be much more eager to have Kristen there, but I don't know True. if it's going to be there. But uh, I'm sure girls, girl sponsors are pretty easy to find these days. We do so. have more girl sponsors. That's true. <laughs> well, okay. So our get to know you question is, 
Wh- what celebrity or star do you think you would flip out the most if you were? We were talking about this at the beginning. Say, not J Lo. Not J Lo. You ran into J Lo. Who do you think it would be the hardest for you to maintain your composure if you were to meet? Mm. So. Is your answer, like, do you have an answer other than John Cusack, which you've already freaked out about? Yeah. I mean, I think the bar for me is pretty low. I think <laughs> I would freak out at almost anybody. Yeah. But who would you freak out? Um, I, like, gosh. Who okay, I... let me say. If I were to run into yeah. In the Wild uh-huh. and they were together, a couple. Yeah. And it was, um, oh, my goodness. Why can I not remember their name? John Krasansky. Yeah. And Emma. Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt. If yep. I were running the, to them together, That's I would fair. be That's really fair. excited. I will say when when J-Lo was behind me, my brother was in the bathroom. And so he came back. Did not, Matt Damon's kind of a big deal. He did not know anything. These are two A-list celebrities. Like these are not this like. This is a huge these deal. Are, this is big. Uh, my, my brother's in the bathroom and he came back. Didn't no idea that they had sat down. Like he came back to the table and I was like, I like grabbed his arm. I was like, J-Lo is behind me. <laughs> So even someone that I don't particularly care about, I did freak out a little bit about. I feel like if you're going to see if you see an A-list celebrity, you're going to like you're going to freak out. So I think I could I wouldn't yell out. I, but I think if I were to see Harrison Ford in the wild, oh. I'll be like, Harrison Ford, Harrison Ford. <laughs> like, I think there's some that you would yell like, hey, yeah. hey, yes, that yes, connects yes, yes, way yes, back yes, to your yes, child. Yes, yes. But also like Tom Hanks, I think oh, I would lose wow. my mind a little bit. Tom That's Hanks, great. No, man, yes. I, like there, there are celebrities I wouldn't. There is, there's definitely a line though. There's like celebrities you really like. Okay, whatever. I don't care. I literally don't care about this person. Like, why would I be excited about it? But there is a level you reach where honestly, any celebrity you see is like, whoa, that's wild. Like, I love that I saw them. Um, for me, someone that I'd like actually geek out about and and be tempted to like approach is right now is Nate Marquette, the comedian. Oh, We're yeah. going to see him in a couple of weeks. He's coming into town. Yeah. That's yeah. what I heard. Yeah, me and Christian are going to see that him. That is not cheap. That We're, is not cheap. We're big fans of him. And so I think I would be really pumped because he feels so approachable. Like I feel like I could approach him. Yes. Um, there's some, like, I'm not going to go talk to JLo. Like she, I, I know she sure. wants to be. Like, I know, you guys have to talk I know about? I'd be carted away. Like, hey, I saw your new documentary. I'd be tackled. Like, you uh, could say, I love your new documentary. It's like, hey, I got a ham and cheese on a roll, too. Have you heard this sound? <laughs> no. So she got at, this is the sound that's going on for JLo. It's, she was doing like some of those like Vogue interviews where they go in their house. And like, what's your go-to bodega order? And she's like, uh, probably ham and cheese on a roll. And an orange drink, if you know, you know, and a bag of chips. And everybody's like, that is the most boring bodega. Like, <laughs> nobody would get that. That's the most boring thing. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Um, so anyway, I, someone that's approachable to me is neighbor got see or somebody that's like that. But they're not A-level. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's funny that they're lower, but sure. they mean more to me in that way. But that's cool. probably it. And I'll see if I see him in person. Maybe I should hey, show up early in a couple of weeks and see if I can connect with him. Well, Justin, thank you for coming to the podcast today. Well, you came to the podcast. I'm already here. This is my <laughs> office. So we you... have some great <laughs> guests lined up. This is kind of rare that it's just the two of us. Yep. But uh, thank you guys for being here with us as well. Uh, we hope to see you again real soon. Sure. Yeah. We'd love for you to email us at podcast at CityRise.org if you have suggestions. We have so many guests lined up. We really don't need suggestions. But if you want to send us a suggestion, <laughs> right, please send right. us a suggestion. Gotcha. Uh, we're not short on people, I think. I just think you and I have reached the end of who we know. Right. We know our church is expansive. And we know there's a thousand more incredible stories. But we really have. <laughs> we have to get we to are, them. We don't, we don't know anybody. Like we, we, we have we our circles. Have to get to it. Yes. And we need you to get us into your circle. Get us into your circle. So you can even, That's if you perfect. have Jennifer on my number, please text us. Uh, Jennifer's yes. number. Let me get it out for you. No. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Justin. And thank you guys for being with us. We hope you had an almost amazing time on the Almost Amazing Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Almost Amazing Podcast from the City Rise Network based in Houston, Texas. City Rise is a partnership of church campuses, nonprofits, and missionaries devoted to lifting our city and the world by generously giving the gospel of Jesus Christ. For more information or to find a church campus close to you in the Houston area, visit cityrise.org.